Risa Connection utilizes interactive connection modeling and visualization, including 2D and 3D views, for the creation of a variety of steel connections. In this video, let's take a look at designing moment connections in Risa Connection. So let's go ahead and get started with a moment connection. Opening a new model, we have the option to open the project settings window, and I'm going to leave this information as the default and set the code to AISC 14. Next is the connection selection. On the left hand side is the module window. So we can go through the drop down menu and choose a moment connection. Here we have a list of several moment connections. So I'm going to choose the column to beam flange plate moment connection to get started. I'm going to create this and call it moment and then I'll hit OK. So here is the new moment connection that's been created. I'm going to adjust the units in this case because I prefer to work in kip feet rather than kip inches in this particular model. And then I'll hit OK. I'm going to change my shear load over here to be 48 kips and my moment to be 320. Now remember, we set our code to LRFD and the global parameters, and that is a global setting, so it affects all of the connections that are housed in this model. So I need to make sure that these loads are entered are in LRFD. Now we have various settings here, the top column distance, the column force, and the story shear. These all relate to the capacity of the column web due to buckling, crippling, etc. In this particular example, we're going to assume that this moment connection is occurring at the very top of the column. Therefore, the webs don't extend any further past this plate to allow us to resist a little bit of the extra flange crippling in this case. And the column force and the story shear can help us out with regards to web crippling. In this case, now for the column, let's set this one to be a W12 by 96. Then let's set the beam to be a W21 by 68. We want to come in here and set this up to be a slip critical connection with respect to the flange bolts. If I come here to the moment beam bolts, these are the moment bolts put onto the beam. I can actually come in and set these to be slip critical. Instead of saying no, which is the default, we're going to set these to be a slip critical connection. Now let's come into the reports and see how this connection does overall. We passed quite a bit and you'll see that there's quite a few more checks here for both the moment and the shear in this moment connection. We're failing for a wide variety of things. For example, is the bolt shear at the flange plate and the beam flange slip critical? So what that tells me is we don't have enough bolts in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be five one inch bolts per row on that flange plate. So we bump that up a little bit farther. I will also change the thickness of those flange plates to be seven eighths of an inch. So that's 0.875 inches. There you can see we've actually thickened that up. Next we're going to change those double fillet welds in the moment column weld. So now I need to set those moment bolt edge distances out so that we have a little bit more room to work with because we have those one inch bolts now. So I'm going to go to the moment bolts edge distance and I'm going to set these to be 1.75 inch for all of these and you'll see on the screen exactly how this affects things. As I change these values, you can see it pulled up the plate out and pushed the bolts in closer to each other. So now we're passing in this section and now you can go ahead and set the remainder of your moment connection parameters until you receive a passing connection. At this point, we've created a moment connection and Risa connection. For more information on other topics, please visit our website, risa.com.